Yeah. We appear to be working. We appear to be live. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Arden, and today we're talking. We're doing like our first look at Wind, basically. A new Boom series by James Tinney and the Fourth and Michael Dialimas. <laughs> um, and uh, we'll be talking about that book in a minute. I did forget to share this out on our social media pages. And that might be a good chance for everyone to kind of creep in on the initial streamy part anyways. So I'm going to post those while people can kind of like get a chance to join us for the stream and get on board if they haven't already. And then we will keep going. We're just going to put these out here. One after the other. If you guys don't follow us on like Reddit, Facebook, and Twitter, that is a way to kind of keep in touch on some of these posts. But I think the best way to do that anyways is to just be subscribed to our YouTube channel and uh, like hit that bell thing so that you get those notifications when we post new stuff. Uh, but still, I try and keep these up to date and such. And like I was saying, it's a good excuse just to kind of let people filter in a bit, which sometimes happens where I, I start talking and reviewing right away and then people don't even know we're online. Um, so I'm just trying to maximize everyone's chance to do that. There we go. There we go. Of course, I... Str oh no, I didn't mean to close that. One second, guys. <laughs> um, of course, I can't talk and type out uh, Facebook posts at the same time, hence me going quiet there for a second. But we should be good to go. Uh, and it does look like the desired effect was had. Okay, and then I was just checking to make sure everything's good. If you guys don't notice, I, I, I have changed the framing ever so slightly, uh, mostly just so. Uh, my girlfriend can be over there doing a couple things without being interfered with, but also I was we were enjoying like the view that was created with the flowers and the fireplace because of all that. So it's very fancy, and now you can all sit down with me as we're heading into the winter months for those of us living in the northern hemisphere. And as we do so, we can take a moment to talk a little bit about wind. <laughs> Uh, a new, well, new-ish boom series that came out, I think, last year, if I'm recalling correctly. But here, I have my information sheet right here to... Oh, I don't have it, but I'm going to pull it up anyways, because that's what I accidentally closed earlier. And that's what I wanted to have around, just in case. Um, okay, yeah, so it came out around, like, summer last year. And I've been sitting on it ever since then, and it's been presumably running. This is not really a full series review, like I said. This is uh, first impressions, as I've labeled this video, uh, in, which we've done for other indie books and stuff, because you can only review so much in a lifetime. <laughs> uh, but also, it's a good way to kind of get a sense of what this book's about. Unlike other number one indie books. Uh, this one is supersized or whatever you want to call it uh, at 40 pages instead of the usual like 24 or so that most comics are. And apparently all wind issues are that long. They're all extra long and I think it really, I don't know if long term that's necessary, that's an interesting choice, but especially for the first issue it really lets them breathe and tell a story, let there be like this setup of atmosphere and stuff like that while also giving us all these little hooks for why we should care at all about this story. Uh, Tinian the Fourth is a good writer who does so many things uh, that we all like but we're also going to be talking a little bit about him because Wind is an interesting series in that regard and maybe we'll start with there. So most of you probably know James Tinian the Fourth uh, for his writing for DC Comics. Uh, he is one of the uh, generation of people who was kind of brought into comics through Scott Snyder. So maybe it doesn't come as too much a surprise that he's mostly known in terms of his DC books for 
his Batman stuff. Uh, Batman Eternal, followed by, like, that stuff we've covered on Comic Island, even, around Detective Comics. And then, where I'm guessing a lot of people, like, what he might be best known for at this point, with his work for Batman. But that's kind of coming to an end. Uh, although I'm sure he's always going to kind of contribute to DC books here and there. Those are going to kind of be guest things. And I don't actually know when this Batman stuff is officially coming to an end. That stuff's always unclear because these writers can work ahead quite a bit. But whenever that's happening, he's kind of transitioning over towards more of... Uh, like that this new platform called like scribd or something like that i don't really know uh but regardless <laughs> i don't know if it's that important the but the idea is with stuff like his direction of his career currently and even his deal with wind tinian's taking comic book writing in kind of a new direction and making deals that hadn't previously existed before yeah, I'll look it up so I have a better sense of the other deal. But the one I was mostly thinking of and why I'm thrown off about not knowing about the other one is I know Wind is largely a boom-owned property, from what I understand, where they kind of paid him more up front, and it's up to them to deal with the marketing, with the licensing, and all of that stuff. And Tinian largely just gets kind of paid up front, like I said, probably a little bit more than what is traditionally merited towards a writer, and also probably securing a similar amount of payment for Michael Dial Linas, uh, his uh, artist, who's incredible, by the way, and don't worry, we'll talk about this comics art soon enough. Uh, and because of that, it's unique compared to the more creator-owned stuff from Image, where writers and artists are a lot more in charge of uh, merchandising and franchising and selling their own comics and getting all that stuff rolling for a new franchise. And I kind of get it. Tinian probably didn't get into this business to sell himself and his books, but probably more to write and tell stories. So if Boom is willing to offer him a deal that he's happy enough to have accepted it, such that they're in charge of that stuff and he just gets paid yeah, I would, I'd probably take that deal too. Uh, even if it does mean, yeah, he, he's probably not going to have a lot of a say or control over how Wind gets adapted into other stuff. But that's already true for writers to begin with. It's just even more so for this compared to if this was an image series. So I, I don't want to yammer on about that too much. But it's just it's interesting and distinct even from something like Department of Truth, which is also written by James Tinian. Um, I'm going to try and find that uh, other deal that uh, he was talking about, but if I can't uh, find it, it's not a big deal. I swear this was the whole thing. Oh yeah, here we are. I just don't want to get this substack, so that's what they're called. And the idea is Tinian and a couple of other writers are switching over to this company, which is interesting because they're more of a newsletter, but this platform is launching with names like uh, Saladin Ahmed, Jonathan Hickman, Molly Ostertag, uh, Jeff Lemire, Adrian Tamayan, and Scott Snyder. So all these really big names with some really in interesting or like exciting potential uh, like work being published through them. That almost reminds me of the old like magazines and zines that were published by different companies including marvel and dc back in the day and it'll be kind of interesting to see where that goes uh it, it uh, resembles kind of what mark millar did with like netflix and kind of going out on his own and making this transition away from comics a bit and we'll see where it all is i've heard on Twitter some people within the comic book industry a little more critical of this move and even Substack in general, uh, treating it with a lot of skepticism, but you know, we'll have to see how it goes to begin with, and I'm very curious to see if like this newsletter format can maybe change things a little bit uh, with uh, what these writers are doing, and I am interested in all that to say the least. Uh, those moves haven't happened yet, but they are all upcoming, so it felt kind of right to maybe talk about Wind a little bit with all of that in mind. So, um, 
all that being said, and I'm sorry for having babbled a little bit, but um, I thought it was kind of worth getting into this stuff uh, and put like wind into context before I review the actual comic, because the comic I really enjoyed, but uh, don't have as much to say about it in terms of like it being anything. It's not as groundbreaking as all the stuff going on behind the scenes. Uh, but there is a lot to like about it, and the number one thing I like the most about it is all this artwork you guys keep seeing flashing over on this side of the screen, actually. Um, I really like some of the, not only uh, like the pencils and the way, I, I talked about it at the beginning of this review, but the way this comic establishes atmosphere through its artwork, through the dark flashes you guys are seeing, uh, just uh, right there with uh, this monster. Uh, which is paired well with the much more brighter fantasy indicated on the cover. And uh, it's all about this little boy named Wind who lives in this magical town called Pipe Town. Well, no, okay, sorry. Pipe Town exists in this magical world, but it rejects magic and is actually very discriminatory towards magical beings uh, with allusions towards there being some sort of strife in the past. And these magical creatures apparently caused these humans quite a bit of grief. Now, Wind is the name of a young boy living in this town with the little elfin ears and stuff, and is a magical being of some kind, and is thus living in hiding in pa uh, Pipe Town. And the rest of uh, the comic is just kind of introducing us to this world a little bit, some of these characters. There's a lot of politics to it all, actually, of like Pipe Town being worried about these outsiders and this prince who wind. Uh, okay, well, so this prince uh, has like this relationship with this gardener, and wind has a crush on the gardener. But through all of that, we kind of learn a little bit about how this uh, Pipe Town is in uh, conflict with the these outer communities of magical beings and stuff and there's a lot of concern that this other figure who has a claim to the throne of pipe town uh might be returning with what i assume are magical uh beings and stuff so there's so many layers to this uh it, it is also a very gay fantasy as i uh talked about or as i put in the title just because wind is gay the gardener is gay and the prince is gay so it's a gay love triangle which kind of forms the central romance arc of this book while there is also this political angle and this fantasy angle and something going on with wind where apparently he can turn into some kind of gruesome monster like we see at the beginning of the story uh and that's uh, all we really get out of the first issue but there's a lot to explore here and I found it really unique and refreshing and that sort of thing. Tinian himself is bisexual and likes to put that in a lot of his work and he's won a lot of awards for stuff uh, including the series um, it's called The Woods which he did with uh, Michael Dial and Ness. Uh, so they're reuniting for this series and I see why because it's a very beautiful and vivid experience and with uh, Michael's writing uh, art artwork I mean they really pull you into things so I do appreciate all of that where I'm a little less enthused about this book which I kind of feel I was hinting at like when I started getting into the review a little bit more is that while there are elements of it that are strong a lot of it does feel like the same sort of fantasy beats we've seen in other things so the stuff that I've mentioned are kind of what makes it unique, but a lot of stuff like the discrimination against magical beings or others being used as a sort of analogy for racism and discrimination in general, the, uh, the whole idea of like, uh, yeah, this town that sort of keeps out this uh, more magical world and, and that sort of threat. These are all little beats and patterns of things I've seen before in other elements of fiction. And while I don't hate it, it just, it does have that element of familiarity, which works to a degree because Tinian long-term tends to write in a way that really creatively does differentiate itself. But for this first issue, there's a lot of stuff I'm reading in here where it's like, yeah, outside of the fact that all the main characters are gay, 
Uh, which I, I don't know, like it's not even all the main characters, just like our three love interest characters, which I actually like, um, but that feels different. But outside of that, it's like, yeah, the rest of the story really does feel largely familiar in ways that I don't know if I can necessarily describe. The artwork distinguishes itself, but a lot of the plot beats are like relatively standard fantasy things. Even if there's nothing that it's specifically ripping off, it just doesn't feel like it's stepping away from other works of fantasy along these lines, if I'm making sense there. <laughs> uh, and, okay, so I haven't, um, yeah. Uh, and with all that, I think I'm going to leave it, because, uh, yeah, I, I don't really uh, have much more to say. I think I've said my piece about what I like and don't like about it. It is interesting what uh, Tinian's been up to these days in terms of the content he's been creating in the uh, and uh, the deals he's making uh, as an author with the larger industry and Substack as well as Boom Studios. So if y'all have any thoughts on that or what you think it means for the industry, feel free to let me know in the comments section below. I personally think it's just a, an example of these evolving uh, trends and stuff like that as writers and artists kind of find ways to work with companies and make sure that like uh, they get a fair share in everything which I am supportive of it, it kind of sucks that Tinian is leaving Batman because he really wasn't doing it that long but he was with DC Comics for a long time and has a long legacy with them at this point it, and it is going to be sad to let them go because a lot of his books are really strong but this is going to keep happening if DC Comics doesn't make the kind of offers that other companies are. And that's where Substack is really interesting, because Boom Studio has been around for a long time, but Substack, uh, as a player in the comic book world, hasn't. And what comes of all of that will be quite interesting. But it really could represent this sort of ongoing change. But the good side of that is it's not like DC or Marvel are going to go away or give up in response to such things, but they're going to have to compete, uh, it, not only in terms of how they pay people, but also it, uh, maybe even looking for new voices uh, to replace the, the, uh, all those names I was talking about that seem to be stepping away from both Marvel and DC. So that's about all I have to say, but if you have any thoughts on all of that, please leave a comment uh, below. And thanks for watching, everybody, and we'll see you next time here on Comic Island.